In this video, we'll explore wide area networks and internet connections. So here we see the familiar diagram that we've been using for a lot of our lessons. And this scenario was essentially two local area network segments that were within the same physical location. But what if they're not in the same physical location? What if they are far apart? and maybe even on other sides of the country, and we want to allow them to communicate. Well, now we're going to have to set something up to allow those two physical locations to communicate between themselves. So let's modify our diagram a little bit here. Now we've got these two physical locations, each with their own local area networks, and they're separated by some geographic distance. And also in our diagram, now we've got the internet as well. And so in order to enable the communication between these two networks, what I really need to do is connect the two routers together. Each physical location has what we'll call an edge router, a router that sits at the edge of that network and essentially connects it to the outside world. And now we want to connect the router here for our first location to the router here at our other location. We're going to do that with a wide area network. And there's a few different options that we have for wide area network connections. It could be a least T1 circuit, or it could be MPLS, or it could be fiber optic. There's a lot of different options that we can utilize here, depending on what our needs and what our budget is. But let's just assume that we've gone to a telco provider, somebody like AT&T or Spectrum and we've gotten this wide area network connection between the two physical locations. Well, now we can route traffic. And the big thing here is gonna be our route tables. So for example, if computer one wants to communicate to computer two in this network, well, computer one is going to generate an IP packet with a destination address of 10.1.2.12. And it's going to send that because it's on a different network it's going to generate an Ethernet frame and send that to the router. And the router is going to have to look at its route table. And the router is going to say, okay, how do I get to the 10.1.2 network? How do I get to this segment? And in all of the examples we've looked at before, the router had an interface that was directly connected to the destination segment. Right. Like before, when these were in the same physical location, this router had an interface that was connected to this network. It doesn't have that anymore. It now has an interface that's connected to this wide area network circuit. And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to tell this router, hey, if you want to get to the 10.1.2 network, forward the packet over this wide area network connection. And when it does forward it, it'll arrive at the other router and the router at the other end will say, hey, this is destined for the 10.1.2 network. I know where that is. And it can forward that packet along. What I'm describing here is something called a static route. A static route is a route that we manually program into a router. So this router may have multiple wide area network connections. It may have multiple different networks that it needs to know how to get to. Well, I can basically configure it with a table, kind of like the Mac tables that we've been looking at, except for I have to manually build these and tell the router, okay, you've got this interface that's connected to a fiber optic connection. If you have traffic for 10.1.2. anything, send it out that fiber optic connection. So we start to build that route table, that logic within our routers. And another option here, if we don't want to use static routes, is we can use a dynamic routing protocol. So a dynamic routing protocol is one in which the routers learn from each other. For example, we could use BGP. And, and with BGP or any dynamic routing protocol, this router is going to basically send messages to its neighbors. It's going to say, hey, other router, I know how to get to 10.1.1.0. And this other router is gonna send a message to this router saying, oh, that's great. Hey, by the way, I know how to get to 10.1.2.0. Let's exchange routing information and let's kind of dynamically build 
a route table between us. And so one way or another, these two routers will become aware of the networks that are reachable over that wide area network, and they can route traffic over it. And there might be other entries in the route table. Like for example, there might be a default route. What's a default route? Well, a default route looks like this. It's all zeros. We often call this the gateway of last resort, where basically we're telling a router, hey, if you get some traffic and it's some network that you really don't know what to do with, send it out the default route. So if we're thinking about the internet, there are a whole lot of networks out there. I don't want to have to configure my router for every single one of those networks to tell it, hey, for each and every one of these networks, send that traffic to the internet. The default route acts like a catch-all, where it basically says, if there's traffic and you don't know where to send it, send it this way. And the routers that are upstream, they'll know what to do with it. So that's what a default route is. And so, yeah, in, in a typical data center, we might have wide area connections to other data centers, but we'll probably also get a internet connection from an internet service provider, basically giving us a connection up into the internet. And so now if computer one, say it wants to send traffic to 8.8.8.8, some network that's not in my route table, well, that traffic is going to be sent to the default gateway and the default gateway will say, I don't know anything about 8.8.8.8. Let me send that out my default route. Let me send it to the internet. And my internet service provider will receive it and say, oh, 8.8.8.8. I know that address. I know where to send it. So this is the typical design of a data center. And we might have multiple LANs within a data center and the router will route between all of those local area networks, but it'll also know about the wide area network connections and what networks those lead to. And it'll also have a default route to the internet so that we can get traffic out to the rest of the world. Let's take a quick moment to do a brief review of a wide area network. And the WAN acronym stands for wide area network. This is a network that traverses a wide area a large geographic distance. And so in our example that we saw in this lesson, we learned how a router can be connected to a wide area network and how we can use static routes to direct the appropriate traffic over that wide area network. So for example, if there's another subnet that is reachable across this wide area network connection, we'll set up our router with a static route to let it know how to get to that destination using the WAN.